So we're going to talk about atoms, just the basics, what they are, what they're made up of, what to expect, right? So first, what is an atom? Atoms are the building blocks of all matter. Literally everything in the universe is just a different combination of atoms. Now, with it being as simple as their atoms, literally everything in the universe is a different combination of atoms. No two things are exactly atomically the same. So atoms have an electron cloud and a nucleus. So the nucleus is the really dense center. So it's a dense, heavy center. It's a small part of the atom, but there's a lot of stuff in it versus the electron cloud, which is really light. Electron clouds are most of an atom, but they, may, or they have way less stuff in them, which makes them really light compared to the dense nucleus. All right, so here's where we start getting more complex, right? So atoms have an electron cloud and a nucleus, and inside that electron cloud and our nucleus are our subatomic particles, right? So sub means under, right? Think submarine. Marine, water, sub, under, underwater, right? So, think submarine. So subatomic particles are going to be the smaller bits that are, are that make up an atom, right? So we have three major subatomic particles. First is protons, second is neutrons, third is electrons, right? So protons have a positive charge. These are a positively charged subatomic particle. They're found inside the nucleus, and they have a mass of one atomic mass unit, right? So this is a mass that's so small, we made it its own unit. To measure it in grams or ounces or pounds would be way too small. So we just made it its own unit. So mass of a proton is one atomic mass unit. Neutrons have no charge, zero charge. Neutral neutrons have no charge, right? These guys have no charge, they're neutral. These guys are also found inside the nucleus, and they also have a mass of one atomic mass unit. And finally, we've got our electrons, right? So electrons have a negative charge, okay? Electrons have a negative charge, and these are who we have to thank for electricity. So electrons have a negative charge, and they're found in the electron cloud, right? Imagine that, right? So electrons are found inside the electron cloud, that outer part. And this is the reason that the nucleus is so much heavier than the electron cloud. So protons and neutrons are found inside the nucleus. They each have a mass of one atomic mass unit. Electrons are way smaller, right? So even though the electron cloud is the larger part of the atom, it's got a lot less mass to it because electrons are so much smaller, right? They're so much smaller that we don't even calculate it really. We just say it's way less than one atomic mass unit because electrons are so much smaller than our other two subatomic particles. All right, electron cloud theory. This is our big impressive phrase, right? So electron cloud theory, this is our modern theory of an atom. This is the way we know atoms look and are shaped today. So electron cloud theory tells us that an atom has a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud, right? But our electron cloud has different energy levels, and each of those energy levels can hold a specific number of electrons, right? So electrons are going to orbit the nucleus in their energy level, okay? And then electrons are going to fill layers closest to the nucleus first. Electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as they can. Electrons are negatively charged. Protons and neutrons, neutrons have no charge. Protons are positive. So the positive charge from the proton and the negative charge from the electron will attract each other. So electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as they can be. So they're going to be in our inner shells first, right? So our shells, our layers, or our levels, we'll use all three, um, are going to be right here. So this atom has three layers, and we always know that they're going to fill that inside one first. They're always going to fill this first shell first. All right, and our valence shell. So our valence shell is really, really, really important. So the valence shell is simply the outermost electron shell. So this is the one that's the farthest away from the nucleus, is our valence shell. 
So valence electrons are any electrons that are found on the valence shell. So the shell that's farthest away from the nucleus is the valence shell. The electrons there are the valence electrons. They are the farthest electrons away from the nucleus. So valence electrons are really important to us because they're going to determine all of an element's chemical properties, including its reactivity. So how likely is it to react with other substances or other atoms or elements? 